Hello and welcome to Public Relations, a Lions University course brought to you by the USA Canada Lions Leadership Forum. My name is Lion Wendy Kane, even though at the bottom of your screens you may be seeing the name Mark Miller. And we're excited to have you here with us this evening. Just as a reminder, most of the people that are registered and participating with us this evening have been on our webinars before, but our webinar is being recorded for those who cannot participate live, or if you'd like to re-listen to the material at a later time. So just be advised that if you, you share with us verbally that you're, um, you'll be recorded. I'd also like to let you know a couple of ways that you can engage with us during this particular webinar. This is usually done, it will be, can be done this evening by asking questions, either by raising your hand and um, we will call upon you and unmute your microphone so that you can speak um, verbally with us, or you can write questions or comments or responses to questions that um, we may ask in the questions pane and we'll relay those to share with the rest of the group. So a little background as we begin. This course is number 110. Public Relations is a required course for the Lions University Bachelor's Program that's designed to help Lions lead at the club level. The Bachelor's Program involves the completion of 10 required courses and at least five electives. I'd also like to remind you that lionsuniversity.org website um, has a lot of our course information and we have a specific page dedicated to each course that includes some of the resources you'll hear about this evening. It will include after today a webinar of this evening's or a video of this evening's webinar, uh, links to supplemental resources, a link to take the quiz to get credit and also the course handout. Uh, we did not put the course handout up in advance of this evening's webinar, but you will be able to download that and I'll just tell you up front that the slides that we share with you, the content on the slides are on the handout. So if you're going to be taking notes, you can just take notes with um, with respect to ideas that you hear or that are shared verbally but are not on the screen or ideas that come to you through the course of our conversation. Now it is my pleasure to introduce you to our faculty for today's session. It's past council chair Dina Rostock. Uh, now you might wonder who the other fellow there is with her in the photo and that's past um, international director Floyd Miller. So. Um, uh, Lion Dina is from a multiple district 39 in Idaho and she has offered her email address if you would like to jot that down uh, I don't recall we put that on the handout but if you have questions or would like ideas or feedback after this evening's webinar she has um, graciously offered to help either one-on-one -on -one or through our Lions University discussion forum that we'll talk more about at the end of the webinar so um, with that it is now my distinct pleasure to welcome aboard past council chair Dina All right. Thanks, Wendy. Um, thank you all for attending tonight. This is really a great opportunity to, for me to share with you about public relations. Public relations is something that I have done for years, both in business and as a lion. And I feel that um, public relations is something that is really necessary for all of us to do to help our Lions Club get our message out and sometimes we are just our own best kept secret. When <clears throat> we talk about public relations, we many people confuse public relations with advertising and advertising is something that um, we all have to do within, within our businesses and sometimes within Lions. So tonight, our course objectives, we're going to just keep it pretty simple, but we're going to ex I want to explain to you the difference between public relations versus advertising, how they're the same and how they're different. I want to go through with you some steps to create a successful public relations campaign. And then lastly, how to cultivate media contacts. 
um, that's pretty important so you can get your message out. First of all, when we talk about advertising, what would you think that advertising entails? What, what is advertising and why do we have it? Um, advertising is something that you can use, but basically it's something that you pay for. In the old adage of people who do this type of do public relations, they say that advertising is what you pay for and publicity is what you pray for. So advertising is paid media where public relations is earned media. So I'm going to ask some of you, what do you think public relations entails and how do you think your club um, uses their time to create public relations? And I want you to think about those questions because we're going to talk about that a little bit later and I'll have you ask questions and share. Um, advertising is short term. Usually somebody who wants to advertise, they pick out one thing that they want to sell you. And, and we can all think of, you know, a Carl's Jr. ad and the newest, greatest hamburger that they're bringing out, or McDonald's, the McRib is back. Um, that is something that they pay for. It's short term. They usually run those ads less than a month or about a month. And the, when you're advertising, it's specific to one item. So you pay just to get that one word or that one concept out to the public. Public relations is a little bit different. Public relations, or I'm sorry, let's do our examples of advertising. And um, for those of you who had children in the 80s, you'll all recognize that Nike swish. I don't know how many times my children asked for Nike tennis shoes because everybody wanted the swish. Um, in Idaho, we have some uh, service stations and the man that owned the service stations was Fearless Ferris, and he was fighting mad about gas prices. I never saw his gas prices were all that much lower than the regular gas prices, but he used a skunk, and all of his um, service stations were called stinker stations. So if you ever come through Idaho, you'll see stinker stations all over the place. And then lastly, um, the rollback prices. I was talking with Wendy last night and she said Walmart's not even on there, but we all recognize that rollback prices with the smiley face um, as part of advertising. Now each of those companies pay a lot of money to advertise, but their signatures, their logos are something we recognize every single day. And that's pretty much what advertising is. So let's go on and talk about some public relations. And what is public relations? Public relations is something that you create and foster with the media. Sometimes it's a press release, and many times that's how you first get into public relations is by doing a press release for a project or for um, some kind of service day, something that your club is doing in the community. Public relations is information that you supply to the media. Um, they don't normally come knocking on your door, but they will sometimes call you back and ask you about the information that you have given them. And public relations is something that is published in the editorial section or as an interview on TV or on social media, maybe on the radio. It's something that um, they come and ask you for. It's not something that you pay for. So public relations has a little more 
credibility in the long run because it's something that's chosen by the media to talk about what you specifically do in your club or in your project and how it benefits your community. Hi, Dina. Yes. I just wanted to offer one clarification because you mentioned that they usually seek you out. And I think we can, with, re with respect to your example of a press release, we can provide press releases, but it's still the option of whether or not that gets published. And right. So, so we can provide it, but we're still, it's, we're kind of selected in that regard. Right. It's still at the discretion of the media outlet as to whether they will use it or not and how it relates to their readership or to the people, their demographics. That's true. So we have some examples of kind of what public relations looks like. And here I have an, a really old article, as you can see it's 1961, about lions selling Christmas trees. This is where someone in the editorial department thought, wow, that's, that's really great, and they knew what um, the lions, all of their proceeds went to their sick, um, their sick equipment fund. So it was something that was really important to that community. And you can see that there's a lion selling a Christmas tree to a very nice lady. That's an example of public relations. Somebody in the media went out of their way to go take that photo, or maybe the photo was given to the media at, as a press release. I don't know because I couldn't get enough research there. One of the other things, when I went to Wikipedia uh, about a month ago and looked up Lions Club International, um, many times Wikipedia the information is supplied by that person or by that club, but they choose who they want to target or who they want to put in their encyclopedia. And so this was just a little bit of information that was on Lions Clubs International, and it was with um, the Lions logo. So they were chosen by Wikipedia to have their insignia in their encyclopedia online. Those are kind of things I think it's probably been tweaked over time by Lions and Lions Clubs International has probably supplied more information. If you want to go to Wikipedia and look up Lions Clubs International, they actually have quite a lot of information that really is good PR for Lions Clubs International. So those were just some examples that I came up with. Does anyone have any questions at this point in time about the difference between advertising and public relations before we go on? If you do, feel free to raise your hand, or if there's something that you would like to share, that would be great as well. Or if you think of something later, please feel free to put those questions up. We'll go on, and my next, um, my next part is how to plan a public relations campaign. We are going to review the six steps that I have chosen in the past to run a basic public relations campaign. There are many experts out there that are willing to share with you their knowledge and they are willing to help you um, pick out steps, and some have more, some have less. There are many um, examples online of how you can set up a public relations campaign. My six steps, we're going to explore those, and so you don't have to write them down really fast, but number one is to have a signature project that you plan to use for years to come. Number two is to know your target audience and use a message-driven story. Number three, to identify your spokesperson or persons and train them. And four, to map out all communications activities. Number five, to use social media to engage and inspire. And number six, 
to use specific parameters to measure your results. So let's explore number one, step number one, have a signature project. I think almost every Lions Club has a signature project that they have done for a while, unless they're a brand new club and they're developing a signature project. You can still use this public relations plan to help promote your signature project and to get your name out in the public. I put a picture here of a demolition derby um, that happens once a year in Idaho. For this town, it's called Homedale. They have had a demolition derby for the last 40 years on the 4th of July. They own it all. They own the cars, they own the beer gardens, they own the food carts, and they run the whole show. They usually raise between fifty and $75,000 each year on one day. They put all of that money back into their community, and because they've been doing it so long, they have great PR with everything that they do. They have been in, featured in several magazines, in newspapers, on the radio, and on television. Their event takes place on one day, and it takes all year to plan it. The whole community is involved. They have purchased in the past tasers for the police department. They have built a swimming pool. They have built a library for their community. They have built boat docks at the river and provided many needs to the seniors, schools, and town projects. They have created and fostered media contacts through the years, and they are always on board when this Homedale Lions Club has a new project. We see them not only in the small town newspaper, but in the bigger newspapers throughout um, the state of Idaho. And because they're so close to Oregon, they're in the or Oregon newspapers across the river as well. Do all clubs have just one project? Not normally. Some clubs have up to 10 projects that they do each year, and they have events going on all the time. It's so much easier when doing a public relations campaign to just pick one project. Otherwise, you're going to overwhelm your media contact. I'd like to know if somebody would like to share some of the signature projects that they have in their club. I feel that that helps um, create some creativity for others and gives some motivation to create better signature projects. So I've, I've opened up the, uh, or you can, if you have a signature project that you'd like to share, you can either raise your hand or you can type it in the questions pane. And Elizabeth Steele has raised her hand first, so I'm going to unmute you. Welcome, Elizabeth. Hey, how are you? Good, thanks um, for joining us. <laughs> thanks. Elizabeth. Um, we Hey, we have a uh, we have several, but we are getting ready to do our annual Christmas parade. Um, actually, this Saturday, and we've done that for the past forty three to forty seven years. I should know that answer, but um, forty something years. So, how do you get the word out, Elizabeth? Um, several different ways. Um, um I put it on my personal Facebook page. Um, also send out um, the newspaper and also previous um, recipients, and our town hall also um, takes our entries for us. Nice. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thanks. I think we have a question, Wendy, up there. A couple of questions. Yeah, we have some input. Uh, let's see, we have a light bulb sale from Lion Chris. A highway cleanup and chicken barbecue for college scholarships. There's an example that uh, Lion Michael shared. A a 5K diabetes race. And we'll take a moment and call on Lion Lynn. Let me unmute you. 
Good evening. Thank you for having me uh, participate. What our club does, and we're a baby club, Port O'Connor Lions Club in South Texas, uh, we have three members. Don't laugh. We have three members. And the three of us are planning our third annual uh, Arts and Crafts Festival. And it's pretty successful considering that we're a very small bedroom type community. And what we've done is, besides advertise on Facebook and social media, uh, our personal pages as well as our club page, and we're doing our e-clubhouse and directing people to go to our e-clubhouse site to get the applications to be vendors at the Arts and Crafts Fair. And we also uh, ad advertise with the uh, local paper that comes out, I think it's bi-monthly, called Dolphin Talk, and the Port Lavaca Wave, and the Victoria Advocate. Um, the Dolphin Talk gives us free space, and then the others charge us, but they do give us a break on the price because we're a Lions Club. Great. And, uh, we get out there and put out bulletins and flyers and knock on as many doors as we need to. Plus, I email out uh, the, the first two years we've had return vendors, and they were already on us at the end of the first event because this happens on the second weekend of spring break. So it's generally March, and uh, they wanted to know could they sign up for next year already. <laughs> so we've actually gotten some repeat business out of it. But all we do is, is charge a fee, a $25 setup fee for inside the pavilion and a $20 outside yard fee. And we raise at least $1,200 every year, which for, like I said, we have a very small bedroom community. That's not half bad. <laughs> no, it sounds great. We don't, you know, we don't ask for any donations from any of the vendors unless they choose to do so. Because what we're doing is raising small scholarship money and uh, just generally keeping our hat in the ring. During the rest of the year, we that is our signature project. The rest of the year, we just do what we can as it comes along. All right. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you. Thank you. We have a couple of other items or ideas that people had shared in the questions pane, so I'll uh, share those and then we can move on, Dina. Right. Landon shared that they have a monthly bottles and cans collection and redemption and also sell Christmas trees, so that's big at this time of year. Um, another, let's see, Lion Catherine shared that their zone has a sensory garden project. Uh, Lion Joyce shared it's Cheek to Reek Garlic Festival, sponsored by or pre presented by our Lions Club. So that does that sounds like a, a pretty unique signature project. And another um, suggestion or another idea. Let's see, Lion. Oh, I lost my place. I'm sorry about that. Lion Gwen. No, Lion Reba. As uh, club also sponsors the annual Christmas parade. Um, not really, as, obviously, as a, as a fundraiser, but getting the word out and involving the, the city and county and local university. So great awareness um, about the Lions Club. We have, um, let's see, a couple of others. A, sorry, I lost my place because it's running together. Uh, Lion H Hillary shared a senior dinner for those over 65 in their community to thank them for their contributions, um, have it, announcing a C Citizen of the Year, and so um, some very interesting signature projects. And we'll, I'll include a summary of those on the discussion forum for hopefully some inspiration to uh, to other lions about some of the service projects. That's great. Thanks, Wendy. All right, let's go on. 
Our second step is to know your target audience and to have a message-driven story to tell them. If you're going to build a skating park or a skateboard park, your target audience is going to be probably under the age of 18. If you're remodeling your citizens, uh, senior citizens clubhouse, then your target audience is going to be a little bit older. Your message that you give out should be compelling, sorry, unique, and define your value to your community. You need to sharply define your message. Facts alone do not constitute the whole message. There has to be emotion and factors that compel your audience to act and want to come to your signature project. Does this mean that you don't use facts? No, not at all. It just means that the facts that you do not, that the facts do not convey the whole message. In the message that you have to tell your audience, you need the who, the what, the when, the where, and the how. And then those facts become the supporting points that define the why. Your core message must be developed. It can be tailored to fit any audience. A message discipline is the key. If you continue to tell the same thing to all of your audiences, it will eventually, um, that message will be delivered consistently across all the board or across the board and that message will then ring true with the people in your communications and it will ring true with the people in your community and it will convey your story. I just, we're going to talk about how to plan a packet, but depending upon each target audience, you can convey the same message consistently across the board by being very pointed in the message that you give. So knowing your target audience and speaking to that audience specifically will help you in the long run and staying on target. That's that's really, really important. It is so important when you're doing public relations because once you have a media outlet that will talk to you or that will pick up your message, if you have consistently gone out in the community and talked to groups and consistently talked to the media and met with them and the message is all the same, those media journalists are going to feel that your message rings true to them and it makes their job easier. So remember that message discipline is the key when you target your audience, but make that message specific to each audience that you're going to present to. The things that you say to teenagers or to young children at a school are not the same things that you're going to say to the Optimist Club that has you in as a guest speaker to talk about your signature project. So that kind of leads us into our third um, part of the campaign. And that is to identify your spokespersons or people. We all have great people in our club that are perfect spokespersons. But if we do not train them to be the spokesperson or per people, then we are losing, we're just going to lose that whole, that, this is one of the most important parts of your, of your campaign. It is so critical and it is the step that we skip the most. If we will take time to create PR packets that are target specific, and then train our spokespeople to deliver that message, we would be so much more successful. We probably do those things, we just don't realize that we're doing them. And if we train our people to be in our clubs to be spokespersons and stay on our target message, then we will be successful within our PR campaign. This step will sharpen your message and will ensure that your club speaks with one voice. And by training your spokespeople, 
it will make them far more confident and comfortable in delivering the message that you have chosen. By creating a packet for targeted audiences, those that you're going to visit, um, your spokespeople will walk into the meeting prepared with a message that is to be delivered. Whether it is for a community meeting with senior citizens or speaking to children, the message will be consistent. And then again, it will ring true with the people in your community. When I talk about training those people to deliver the message, if they are just a really go-getter, you want to train them to have some public speaking skills, how to create an outline, how to take that message and make it personal to the audience. Sometimes people have that naturally, but we can hone their skills if we train them to be good PR people. We can teach some of the younger people how to go to schools and how to talk to the younger people, and they're probably pretty good at that. But also, some of our seniors are great at going to talk to younger people. So by training them, um, by teaching them how to follow an outline, and how to present the things that you put in that PR packet, it will just make them so much more viable to your club. Does anybody have any questions? I see a couple of questions up there. Wendy, do you want to? We had a question about how do you develop a PR plan for a club in a large metropolitan area when the, the papers do not want good news? And I wouldn't call my area a large metropolitan area, but Lion Judy, I have a similar situation. Um, you know, it's, there's so many different news options. And so how, how can you get or develop a plan that gets that attention? Well... I can give you that right now, or, or I'm going to cover that a little bit later. But definitely, it, well, you need to do research into the media outlets that are in your metropolitan area. Some media are far more likely to help out non, um, just nonprofit organizations. Um, they cater to them, actually. And then it is going to them with something after you do your research that's really specific to the people that read or listen to that specific media outlet. You need to know what their perspective is. You need to identify who their target audiences are. And then if your news release, your press release, is really specifically targeted towards them and you know you have to think about it in being it's got to make it easier for them to do their job so be consistent um, be persistent but don't be a pest but once you meet with someone who will listen to what you have to say uh, your chances of getting those press releases printed or published or spoken on a radio station are far more likely to happen, especially if they think it's really, um, if, they, if they think it pertains to the community and it pertains to their target audience. And that's where research comes in when public relations is not easy. It takes a lot of work and you have to be consistent out there every day, you know, every week, giving that same message over and over and over, whether it's, go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say, I think you had mentioned something and initially when you said, uh, or focused on knowing your target audience, I was thinking of, you know, the ultimate um, the target audience of the public because that's who we want to learn about and come to our projects and support our events but right. you said something a moment ago that also made me think of it the second way and that is our target audience as in the media representative and how do we make our message appealing and meet their needs so we need to balance both of those you know that you know our you know their ultimate audience 
is who we want to reach and so how does you know how do we craft our messages and and I think the other piece that you mentioned that stood out um, someone asked a question about how do we make some of our projects more interesting and I think really focusing on the why I mean we'll get the the details of where to show up if there's a cost right. or a donation but why do we want that and it's you know it's one thing to say that we're supporting college scholarships it's another thing depending on the type of media to be able to have you know a short video or a photo of somebody who's now you know walking across the graduation stage or or talking about what their education means to them and, and you might get more into that with, with social media but um, right and that's going back to have your story a message driven story and, and so I think one thing that we probably aren't that great at as you know individuals in this large organization is telling stories and so that may be a good portion of the training you know not just training on our message but how to tell a story about the you know why it is we do what we do and those benefits right so it has to have emotion people want to feel emotions they they want that feel good thing they want to have that all moment about you know boy we went and bought a tree and look at what that money did um, and it's really good just the other thing that I had to say is I found that when we invited the editorial staff of the media that we were targeting to come and to talk to our Lions Club about what they do and they sat through the first little part of our meeting and found out everything that we did because they have to listen while they're there to some of the things you know that we're doing they became far more interested in our club and how they could um, focus or put us into focus in their media arena. So if you find that there are some clubs in your area that are getting pretty good press, you might talk to them and see who their media person is, who their media contact is and they might be willing to share that with you but it takes time to cultivate that and I did find that by inviting that media person to your Lions Club to speak to you and to um, talk about some of the things that they've written or some of the projects that they've been involved in so that they feel like you have an interest in them as well that helps a lot I had, there was one suggestion from Lion Susan before you move on to the next point, and she shared in she's she's in a large metropolitan market as well, and she she recommended focusing on either local entities and approaching them or maybe more targeted publications. So instead of trying to reach the L.A. Times, you might find a publication that's you know specific to. I don't know your your target audience, and instead of trying to go for the you know the big home run where people may or may not read it or may or may not get published, um, but focusing on on either local papers even within large metro areas or more targeted. So thank you, Susan, for for sharing that example or idea as well. Yes, thank you, Susan. Um, let's go on. Our fourth step is to map out all communications activities. This is really important. Execution is totally vital and you need to prioritize and generate awareness in all sections of the media. Um, print media is great, but we all know that in today's world, not everybody takes the paper anymore. Or if they are reading the paper, a lot of times it is online. Um, radio and television and social media have a wider audience, although the message or report is much shorter. And that's why you need to have a sharply honed message that can be conveyed quickly because you won't have a lot of time. If anyone has ever been on a radio program, you basically have probably 15 to 30 seconds to convey your message. So by keeping your message on point, you can get those um, ideas out across all media uh, outlets. By targeting them, I'm talking about targeting just a few in the very beginning. You, 
we talked about that a little bit ago about not trying to target such a wide area, but just to do your research and then have a plan. So we're going to plan to send out this public relations or this press release, but we're only going to send it to these five companies because they're the ones who are who have the target audience that we have. They're the ones that are more um, favorable to nonprofit organizations and they like to to talk about the things that your club does. So when you do that, your research will pan out best when you decide who you're going to target and you map that out and you're going to send that press release to this radio station and this TV station on these days and then you're going to send out your public service announcement to the paper. If your community like Boise has a, a magazine that's just, it's called Boise, um, they're really favorable to print a lot of information for nonprofit organizations and they'll even give you a little section that you can list your activities for the full year in January. So by doing that research, you can have a better idea of how to map out your communications. Does anybody have any questions or comments on that? All right. There are no, no hands sure. raised at this point, but I think the other thing you mentioned was the timing. And a lot of, of times, whether it's your, like the community magazine, you have to plan on the publication schedule that isn't, you can't send it for an event that's going to be next week, and that's where your research comes in, in handy. Okay. Um, but also if you're going to be maybe producing a commercial type of thing for either television or, or radio, you know, those things take more time than perhaps a press release that would go to a newspapers or something that is, or that you would use for social media that's more immediate in publications. Right, and if you think that you should send it in a month ahead, you know, usually send it in six weeks ahead because like Wendy said, some of those things take a little extra time and especially where a magazine has so much space, you know, the earlier they get your information, probably the better chances you have of having it printed in that time frame. So, don't wait till the last minute. All right, let's go on. Let's use social media to engage and inspire. Social media is huge, and I think that for many of us, it's a little bit daunting. But we need to come into the 21st century. We need to use social media in a way that we can engage others to have them act and also to inspire them. And this is where having your story is really important. Facebook is a great um, platform to share your stories, especially if you're giving out an award, if someone has um, received a scholarship and they write you a note. I know that our iBank has a Facebook page and sometimes will print, um, take a photo and print a thank you note that somebody has written because they've gotten glasses or they've gotten an eye surgery and it makes a huge impact. And it inspires people to want to go out to the projects that, that you're doing. Um, Instagram is great. It's a lot of photos and I know that LinkedIn, I'm a part of that. You can hook up with lions all over the, the world and you can have um, great conversations that help, but you can get ideas there. Um, Pinterest, there I see a lot of lions clubs that use Pinterest to um, inspire people, to let people know about their upcoming events and then putting photos on Pinterest um, really helps people become more engaged in, um, in with 
their local communities. I think that social media is a great place. And the best part about social media is it is free. That is the best thing ever. It, free is good. And with Lions Clubs, we all know that we're looking for free because we don't have a lot of money to spend on advertising. But these platforms with, um, I guess, the newest one that my grandkids are telling me about and having me starting to use is Snapchat. And you can have a whole list and you can send a picture out and it doesn't stay on for a long time, but it conveys a great message really quickly. So if you haven't checked out Snapchat with some people, you might check that out. But go ahead. Oh, yeah, I was going to say this, this might be a good opportunity. We have a few extra minutes to see if anyone has a success story related to social media. And this, I think, is going to be an area that we're going to be being trained on and getting more information. Um, probably adding this even to Lions University because the potential is there. There's a reference um, Lion Dawn shared, you know, using the blogs and Twitter and you think you yes. need to hone your message now, try honing it in 140 characters or less. Um, right. But, but I think probably one of my lessons and what as I'm looking to do more for my Lions Club on social media that I'm starting to pay more attention to is what are the things, you know, what do I share on Facebook? You know, people that are sh people are sharing photos. They're sharing videos, and so you know, it's not just if you know if I share a video, my friends see it. But if they're inspired or they laugh because it's it's brought them some joy or some some motivation or inspiration, then they're going to share it. And that's you know, you said the best thing about social media is it's free. I think the second best thing is that it can be viral, and you also you. Know, you have an yes. audience of people that are either you have things in common with, where, whether you grew up, your neighbors, they're in your community, or you work with, or lions, and so um, lots of opportunity there. But in order to help figure out what to put on social media, I think one, one of the best lessons is to just reflect on how you use social media. Uh, Lion Lisa shares that event invitations on Facebook are are helpful to get the word out about different events and activities and we have a couple of other looks like there's several people that are have some great feedback on about using Facebook and I think what I'll do is is pull some of those and put them on a a forum post so that you guys can continue sharing Facebook specific ideas um, but let's see Lion Kendra shared that Facebook is a great way to acknowledge people on events and their stories or also even just to to honor and let um, let your your friends and friends of friends know when when someone is has been sick or passed away there's district uses line AJ shares that their district has a Facebook page where they promote promote all of their events and um, uh, Lion Michael shared a lesson to not share negative aspects on Facebook, and I think whether that's personal or whether that's related to Lions, um, you know, don't if you don't want to see it on television, don't put it on Facebook. Uh, I think sometimes right. our teens have a challenge with with that, uh, and as far as uh, recognizing that um, you know your what you put on Facebook can be seen by potential employers, by college, you know, recruiters, and and other things. So. Um, Definitely, we, we, want, we want social media, we, we want both personally and for our Lions to have that positive impression and positive message. Uh, so, uh, great. Well, I'll, I'll put those, those items that you share on um, the discussion forum, but also you know, continue to share some things that you've seen that have worked or maybe things that you wouldn't do again to, to help each other on how to engage and inspire others through social media. Thank you, Wendy. All right, let's go on to our sixth step. Um, to use goals and to um, use those goals and results to measure your success. I want to tell you a little bit about a Lions Club that has done a tree sale for the last 52 years. They're very successful. They order a lot of trees. They sell a lot of trees in a very short period of time. Usually they're only open for two weeks. Um, they start at the Thanksgiving holiday and 
they usually end two weeks before Christmas or a week before Christmas, depending on when Thanksgiving is. They have a lot of trees that are delivered, and they always run out. One of the things that makes them so successful is that they are finding that it is multi-generational at this time. They're the people that originally started coming and buying Christmas trees have um, their children are now coming with their children, and they're seeing three and four generations of families coming to buy these Christmas trees, mostly because um, they see where the money goes, and it is realized in the community, and they make that really, really clear. One of the other things that they started doing about 15, 16 years ago was they send out a postcard to every address or every person that comes in and buys a tree from the year before, and they have a pretty large database. I think they send out somewhere around 1,600 postcards every single year. That's a lot of postcards, but what they get back is if they bring in the postcard, that postcard gives them 10% off their tree. It's not a huge amount off your tree, but they get the postcard back and then they get that address and that family and that person coming back year after year. It's created a lot of great public relations over the year with their customer base. And the word of mouth is huge. They give most of their money for eyeglasses, and they have photos out at their tree lot of the people who have been recipients of eyeglasses over the years, and sometimes with little thank you cards, and um, one especially touching one was uh, a little boy wrote that he was able to see his mom's face for the first time. And so that creates a lot of emotion and a lot of reasons for people to come back. They always seem to get some of the media that comes out and talks to one of the lions and they put it out on, you know, as a little story almost every single year. It's those kind of successes that help you measure your results. In advertising, we can see results really quick. Did that product sell, or is that hamburger the best? But in public relations, sometimes it's fast and you can see the results, but most of the time, it is something that you do year after year after year. I was at Trader Joe's today, and for not everybody who knows what Trader Joe's is, it's a little grocery store. They have their own brand. Um, they're very popular, and they're not a huge store, but they make a difference every day in their community. And the people that work there are the nicest people. No matter where you go to a Trader Joe's, there's always a lot of staff on, and they are so helpful, and they are so nice. And their public perception is excellent, and people get so excited when a Trader Joe's is built in their community. That is what we need to do as lions, is to get our, our time, get our, our projects, get the things that we do out in front of those media outlets and in front of the public as a whole so that we can create that great public relations that not, doesn't just last this year, but it lasts for years to come. Does anybody have any way that they have measured their public relations in the past? How you set a goal and how did you see the results that you would like to share? While we wait a moment for any responses, um, I was thinking with, with respect to this Christmas trees um, postcard campaign, obviously they would be able to measure not just the success of the the effort as far as tree sales but directly how many people came in with the postcard so they could compare right. you know the cost of that part of their public relations campaign versus the 
the income that it brought the club, but it also gives them a tremendous opportunity if they start or take on a new project, say for Valentine's Day or for some other you know time <laughs> of the year, they have people who already you know know about the Lions and have supported them, and they wouldn't necessarily be surprised if they got a postcard you know in the middle of the year for a you know a Fourth of July picnic or something. So right. um, you know, really, it's a, a great a, database to have. A neat opportunity. Uh, I don't see any comments in the okay. questions pane or hands raised, so we can move on and we'll have an opportunity just even after we wrap up if, if folks want to continue. Okay, we've talked about how to cultivate our media and we're just going to go over these really quickly. If you have questions, um, you have my email, please feel free to contact me. Um, my biggest thing about Media Outlet is research, 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 and more research, and then research some more. Know everything you can about the people that you're going to target. Know the people that are interested, the, the media that are interested in the things that your club does specifically. Um, some television stations, magazines, newspapers lean more favorably towards non profit organizations, and I've stated that a few times, and they really do. There are some media outlets that are just not interested, so don't go to them. Stay away from them. When you are starting out a public relations campaign, always target 10 or less media outlets. You need to be able to manage what you're doing. If you have sent out 25 packets, you're in trouble because you can't manage all of that. You need to be able to manage what you send out. My other thing is check with the clubs that are in your area um, or in your state and find out how they get good press. They will have good ideas and they may have a contact that you can contact and maybe hook up with. Once you have identified those media outlets and the journalists that you wish to target, get your press release and your information ready. And when you are planning a press release, make sure it is relevant to that media outlet. That goes back to research. How, how will they perceive it? The information should help the journalists do their job and do it easier. If you're making it easier on them, they're more interested in making time for you. Do not ever send out a mass email. If you want to kill any public relations with media across the board, do not spam the media outlets. Your name will be shared with everyone. Trust me on this. It is rare that a journalist will come knocking on your door. Most of the time you must go to them and make it easy for them. If they do contact you, ask them how they want the information sent. Make it easy for them. Make it easy for them to meet with you. Um, again, by training the people that you want to be your spokespeople, once they are there, you're not going to have a lot of time to get your message across. It is best if you are a good listener when you are with them, and that will help you understand how and when they want you to contribute the to the story that they are either talking about or one that they are writing. I'm sorry. Um, remember that you only get one chance to launch this. So be really, really careful in the things that you say. Again, that goes back to training, making it targeted and how to make it easy for them to publish or to talk about your project. And once you've met with your contact, you can stay in touch with them. Follow up with them. Um, follow them online. When you go to meet with them, know the kind of things that they've written and talk about something that they've written recently that you appreciated. Be gracious, and this is my always, the one thing, if you meet with a media contact, always, always, always send them a handwritten thank you note. Nothing will make an impression 
like receiving a handwritten thank you note. I'm telling you it will make a difference in their perception of you as their contact and um, it will make an impression and their perception of your club will be raised significantly. I know that we're out of time and I just want to tell you how much I appreciate each of you for being here today. Um, if you have some questions, I'm, I'll stay here as long as we need to to answer some of them. Um, I'd like to thank Wendy. She, she is a great friend and she um, has, has done a great job on all of these webinars. So again, we have, we have reached our objectives. We have explained to you the difference between public relations and advertising. We have given you the steps for a successful public relations campaign. And I've given you some ideas on how to cultivate media contacts. And again, just thank you so much for being here with us this evening. Thank you so much, Dina. I, uh, <laughs> while you were talking about the cultivating relationships, I thought of a, a fascinating story that got my husband featured in a newspaper that isn't even, that's, I don't know, 600 miles away um, because of social media and because we're, we are tight on time and we want to honor the you know, approximate one hour for our webinars. I'm going to put that story in the in the um, discussion the discussion forum that we have because as I thought as you were talking about cultivating relationships I thought that's something that we ought to be doing as Lions Club and I'm sure it was I mean obviously it wasn't intentional the way he happened to be featured but if we can do things like that intentionally and and be able to get the word out about our projects and the things that are happening then maybe there's again there's a lesson to be learned there and so how can we you know, observe what's happening around us so uh, I, I'm gonna gonna not tell you what it is and I'm sorry Dawn she's already commenting about oh make us wait so this is to encourage people to go to the forum um, but before we wrap up I want to remind you of the few administrative items associated with Lions University um, you can track your completion of Lions University courses on the members area and you can get, get to that from lionsforum.org or directly at members.lionsforum.org and your profile will show the courses that you have completed usually once you've passed a quiz it may be a couple of days before the uh, before it gets updated because we do that manually but um, it will show your progress towards the course completions Again, kind of the, the best place to start is lionsforum.org. From there, you can get to our Lions University um, website. You can get to the members, members area. And the big green arrow is particularly highlighting the discussion board and the link to um, our discussion. And I really would encourage you to, to help carry on the discussion. There were a few questions and ideas that we didn't get to here live that I will add there. And um, you guys have a lot of experience, both of what's worked and what's not worked. And we want to be able to share the best practices and how to help each other be, be more successful in getting our amazing messages out to our communities and to our target audiences so we can help more people and um, get more hands to be able to continue to serve. So um, please do go to the, the, the discussion forum for that purpose. Um, many of you have been loyal participants in our webinars and so thank you for that. Uh, we've taken a, a little brief hiatus during the holidays but our Lions University leadership team did recently decide that to make it easier for your scheduling and ours with our faculty that we are dedicating Tuesday evenings to um, Lions University webinars. Um, some of the webinars that LCI does are held on Wednesdays and Fridays. So um, do encourage you to continue to support and learn from Lions Clubs International as well. So our next webinar will be on January 6th. And um, the that specific topic is still being laid out with, with our faculty. So we should be having um, our January courses scheduled here within the next week and would encourage um, you to, to check our calendar on lionsuniversity.org and I hope each of you have a wonderful holiday season. And now the all-important 
uh, link to take the quiz to get credit for this evening's session. Um, you can go to our course page on Lions University for that. Or let me see, I can put it in the chat pane and make that available to you. And I think it will be a direct link. So um, just posted that. You can go directly to um, the quiz to get credit. And um, so that's, that's where we'll end the webinar, unless there's anyone that just would, would like. I'll go to um, our list and see if anyone has their hands raised. If you have any comments, we will we'll officially end now. But if you have any questions or comments, uh, Lion, Dina, and I'll stay on for a few minutes. And thank you again, Dina, for um, some great information and hopefully some inspiration for helping us with our projects. Thanks, Wendy. Good night, everyone.